Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are checking out CTJS. Now CTJS is uh, billed as a 2D game editor, but I think that's actually underselling it. I think this is actually a full-blown game engine. I'm not sure why they don't go with the full name, uh, but yeah, that's what it's all about. This guy's open source, cross-platform. Uh, the JS might kind of give a hint at what the programming language behind it is. So let's just jump in and take a look. Now first off, we're at the CTJS webpage. I'm going to jump in hands-on with CTJS in just a second, but if you want to check out the webpage, it is a available at ctjs.rocks. Um, it, it's a surprisingly polished package. It's available, as you can see, uh, for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It is also open source up on GitHub. If you're interested in checking out the source, it is available under the MIT license. Um, it's a JavaScript project. I believe it is Electron hosted. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Let's uh, jump in. We're going to go take a look at it right now. So here we go heading over. Uh, so the first thing that I know a lot of you guys are really interested in, let me just maximize this guy up. Nice clean user interface, very straightforward. Uh, you can add global level scripts right here, but generally you're not going to need to. We're going to show you why in just a second. So we have the options here. Uh, we got a few things in here, like we can edit the uh, the defines for our various different actions, so we can handle uh, multiple different actions using a consistent set of code. And then the weird thing here is I didn't find a way to exit this guy without saving. Now, one of the nice things that we've got is pop in help uh, available at all time. Uh, there's context help when you click these little icons, it'll bring you to the appropriate part. On top of that, you have kind of a scratch pad notepad for your project and for global. So if you just want to save some information, have it available at any particular time, you can do your note taking over there. But again, the nice thing is you got that nice integrated help over there. By the way, uh, let's talk about the help for just one second. So here we are. This is their homepage. The help is very um, good. Uh, so we got full documentation for all of the code. Uh, we got instructions, tips, um, you know, you name it, it's there. Plus there are a number of tutorials that ship with this guy. Uh, it is a very well documented editor or engine, whichever you wish to call it. All right, so let's exit out of there. We're back at the global settings at this point. I'm going to show you up here. Here is the main game menu. And for those of you that care, yes, there is theming support and it is instant, does not require a restart. Uh, so we have three themes, horizon, dark, and light. So go back to the dark. That seems to be what you guys prefer. Um, so yeah, there's where your global settings are. You name your game up here, give it a version up here. Again, you can set up the input, a couple of things you can configure, or you can bring in a script and you can create it right here. I don't need to though. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. This is also a very modular engine. So you see here right now we're using the random place fit to screen mouse and keyboard mod, but there are a number of other modules available here. So you can see down here, so if we needed uh, if any particular ones, we've got random import, you see it's checked, but you click on it, you'll get a description of how it works and then click over here on reference and you will actually get documentation on how to go ahead and use these modules. Very nice in that regard. So now I'm gonna jump way over. I've got a tutorial going on right here. This is a room or a scene. This is your level designer, uh, very straightforward. You can you know, bring in a background image. You can have multiple background images. So you see here, we've got copies of different things. So we got sprites we can instance in if we so wish. So boom, and I could create a sprite in there. This guy's a procedural game, so I'm not gonna mess with any of that stuff. And you can kind of instance the things into your game here. Obviously you can add more as you wish. Um, over here, we've got backgrounds, so you can bring in a background layer. You can have multiple backgrounds, so you can have um, you know parallel parallax effects and so on. And you even have a tile set option. I don't have any tile set loaded, so I'm going to get out of there. But you do have the ability uh, to bring in tiles uh, and paint using tile sets. So if you want to use that traditional grid-based look, you do have that option. Also, you weirdly enough have the ability to change the grid, but I don't know if you've got the ability to turn off the grid. And then we've got zoom controls over here. Uh, very clean, polished uh, level editor environment there. Uh, straightforward in how it works. There's no real big guessing of what's going on. And then for whatever tool you've got active, you've got instruction up here on how to handle things. Um, so you basically create your game on a room by room basis. This level has just a single room. Speaking of the game, if you want to go ahead and play it, click the little play icon up there. This is a browser based app. So your game is loaded up in your browser uh, a window. It's kind of a hosted browser window, but you can see over here, uh, you've got the developer tools opened up to, to you know, profile your web page. You can hook up a debugger if you so wish, set breakpoints and so on. Uh, but yeah, there is how your game is run. And then let's head on back over here. When you are done with it, you basically want to package it out. You can export to zip or export for desktop, and that will create an EXE of your game that you can then share. Um, 
So we didn't see here, this is where your textures come in. So if you want to bring in more textures, you can do so. We also have support for skeletal animations. I believe these are using uh, Dragon Bones as their format, but if you bring in an animated sprite, you do have that option. Uh, we've got UI settings here. So we've got some uh, text fonts. We can create uh, bitmap fonts and styles out of, um, T I believe it's TTF files to start with. So you can go ahead and create your fonts in this setting. And then for some reason, this demo does not have any sounds, but it's got sounds. Now what you may might, might be, might, 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 can't speak all of a sudden. What you might be wondering at this particular point is how do you program things? And we'll look at all over here and now we're in the type section. And you see here, these are different than textures. So these are actually like entities in your game. So for example, here we have the player ship. And then for that, it's got a series of callbacks and it automatically creates a tab for each one. So this is on create. So when it is first initially created uh, on step, this is on stepping through the game loop. So as the game runs, you'd put your game logic in here and you can see it's straightforward uh, JavaScript code. Um, we have an integrated editor. We have code completion in that editor. I do believe we have the ability to zoom in and out. So you get a full bone edit, uh, editing environment embedded in, including a uh, Oh, what's this called? Code preview. So you can quickly jump through your code on the right hand side. It's a decent experience for sure. Um, you got code folding as well, if that is your thing. And yeah, that's how your editing is, how your, uh, your game logic is applied. Over here, we have the draw part of the loop. And then finally, we have when it is getting rid of. And of course, there are the options to add global scripts. At the same time, you can also add Let's go back here to the module. So again, you have things via modular support, or you could bring in your own module as a compressed zip file. Uh, once again, there is good documentation for everything is available. This little pop out right here on this section here. And uh, yeah, essentially that is CTJS. It's, it's a nice environment for sure. I'm gonna head back to the starting page. I'll show you a couple of the other options we've got here. So we've got, all right, let's just do that I'm fully out. So where do you go? I don't think it's exit. All right, let's just exit out. And that is here in downloads. Let's just fire it up from the beginning. So when you first launch CTJS, you're actually brought to this screen right here. Uh, you've got your previous examples available there, but if you download it, you'll also notice if you go into the install folder, in my case, in the Win64 directory, in the examples, there's a number of example projects and folders. So the one we were looking at right there was the uh, space shooter example. Other options are available here. So for example, here is the platformer. Uh, sure, I'll recover. All right, so here we go. This is a slightly more advanced example. We come in here and you can see instead of having just one room or one level, uh, you've got multiple here. So we'll jump to level two in this particular case. So you can see it gets a little bit more advanced. Uh, I don't know if they're using tile. No, they're still not using tiles on this map. So basically they're using a background and placed tiles in the world, but you could have also done it with tiles uh, sets up here. Another thing you may have noticed is room events over here. And this is sort of the same thing on create and but in this case it's slightly different so it's on leave instead of on um exit or destroy or whatever but you've got this logic here that you can do things for um you know controlling global logic between rooms and state transitions and so on and, and handle different uh, code and functionality at that level and then when you're done click down here and you are done uh so really a nice polished um interface on the whole. Again, everything in the scene can be defined as well. So go over here to types. You've got the various different types and they all have the various different um, steps that you can add your game logic to. We also again have um, documentation links available on the fly that do explain whatever you are working with. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a nice setup. I, I actually appreciate how clean this whole thing is. Again, I, I, I struggle to understand why they call it an editor when this is clearly a full-blown game engine. Uh, but you know what, it, it's their option to create the semantics that they wish. So there you go. Anyways, this is CTJS. Once again, if you are interested, it is available at ct ctjs, sorry, dot rocks, like so. I will link that in the linked article down below. Uh, it is, again, completely free. And once again, it is also open source under the MIT license. If you don't know your open source licenses, uh, MIT is about as liberal as they get. I always, one of my favorites is when I see MIT license because it, um, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have any limitations on it really that will affect you. And as you can see, it is updated pretty regularly. Uh, so the last update in this particular case seems to have been yesterday in the source area. So uh, it is very much a game engine under active development. So uh, yeah, I'd recommend checking it out. It's a, it's a nice package. So if you want to, you know, build it yourself, there are instructions on uh, how to do so on uh, 
the GitHub page, which I will also link down below. All right, so that is it. That is CTJS, a level editor slash game engine. Uh, very polished in the way it breaks things down. It's quite an impressive package, and I do recommend that you guys check it out. Well, let me know what you think of it down below, uh, and uh, I will talk to you all later. All right, see you later. Goodbye.